Hi, I'm Angelo with Romeo Tree Service in Tucson, Arizona, and I have a good opportunity with this small desert willow to give a class in structural pruning or otherwise pruning for good structure, which basically means that we're going to make sure that the main trunk dominates over the top of all the limbs that should be lower. And we find that out first by finding out what is the main trunk. First thing we do is we go all the way to the bottom of the tree and we only have one choice here. This must be the main trunk because we only have one choice. Then we come up here, we have this one or this one. Well, it's got to be that one because this has a branch collar on it indicating that it is growing from or emitting from the main trunk. So this is main trunk. And then up here we have three choices, one, two, three or three. Well, that gets kind of difficult to decide because it almost looks like they all have collars on them, but I'm going to choose the most upright and largest diameter limb as the main trunk. And it continues to go up. And here is the main trunk all the way up to its apical bud. Here we are, main trunk. Everything else that's growing is considered a lower limb and should be subordinate to the main trunk of this tree so that as we make the reduction cuts to reduce the lower limbs to make them less than the main trunk can then start to dominate over the top of all those lower limbs what happens if we continue to allow the lower branches to go too far out to get greater than the main trunk if we allow that to happen then the branches the lower branches start to become just as thick a diameter as the main trunk. They start to reach a one-to-one -one aspect ratio, meaning that they are the same thickness. And when that happens, they start to grow and they start to push up against one another. When they push up against one another for a long enough time, they may form included bark. And then they begin to push up too much against one another a small wind comes through and the branch breaks off or the weakest link breaks off so we want everything that is lower to be subordinate to that main trunk another cause of this what is otherwise co-dominance that causes included bark that causes breakage another catalyst for this is when the inner crown of the tree is taken out all these nice branches if we were to remove these the tree has an actual physiological response to growing long and weak and when it grows longer when those lower branches grow longer they start to get out and they see the light of day over the end of the crown and then they start to get just as thick as the trunk because of all of those nutrients from the sun when that happens, then they also start to get just as thick as the main trunk, and then that can cause breakage as they start to push up against one another. So here we are, everything other than this main trunk, we are going to make less than through reduction cuts. Remember, reduction cuts are taking leaders back to branches, not branches off of leaders. Here we go. The whole point is to make it less than. We are reducing not only material, that is interfering with the dominance of the main trunk, but we're also reducing everything else to make it less than so that the main trunk can become greater than. This is actually a really nice reduction cut right there. Just finding leaders back to branches. On occasion, you might actually make a thinning cut, meaning taking a branch off of a leader because maybe the branch just happens to be larger than that leader. Now this pruning holds true whether this tree is the size, what is it, six or seven feet, whether it's this size or if it's the size of this Palo Verde behind me. The same concepts hold absolutely true that we want all of those lower limbs to become subordinate 
to that main trunk so that the main trunk, if my hard hat was the main trunk, we want the main trunk to dominate over every single lower limb. And those lower limbs, as they go out, we keep them subordinate through those reduction cuts. See, I gotta watch where I'm pruning. I almost made a cut on the main trunk, which is exactly what I'm not looking to do. So here's a good example. Here we have a lower limb. It starts low, way down here. And where does it go? All the way to a high place. So whenever you find a low limb that goes to a high place, that is the perfect limb to subordinate from the main upper trunk. I found a nice little branch to bring it back to. Here's the branch I brought it back to. I cut it. I made a reduction cut on the leader. So the red flags to look for are low branches, branches that start low and go to high places which also usually have a one-to-one -one aspect ratio with the trunk. I'll just keep on going, bringing down low limbs that go to high places so that the resulting growth ends up being thickness and strength in the trunk and that these lower limbs just start to become lower and subordinate to the main trunk. Here it is again. These branches are on the lowest limb of the trunk. And where does it go? All the way to a high place. So we wanna bring them down to a lower place, basically to keep them in their place. Subordinate what should be lower away from what should be higher and dominant. And even though this limb isn't necessarily in the way of the main trunk, I'm still gonna reduce it to make it less than. Sometimes it's difficult to find the right uh, reduction cut, but I see a good one right there. So if we look at the tree as a whole now, I'll go around the other side. We could see that the main trunk, this, is much higher than what is on the lower branches. The resulting growth of this is going to cause the main trunk to grow thicker at a quicker rate and the lower branches at a slower rate so that the main trunk is significantly thicker than the lower branches. Because the strongest structure is to keep any branches smaller in diameter than their leader. Or any branches that are coming off the trunk, we want them to be smaller in diameter than that trunk. That is a stronger system. I'd like to point out that we've kept the inner crown of the tree, all of the green material. When you keep the inner crown, all of the branches on the inside, there's three beneficial responses the tree has everything on it gets thicker and stronger. If you take all of that inner material out, everything on the tree gets weaker and longer. Also, all of this inner material serves to absorb nutrients from the sun in the low light conditions, right? Because naturally it gets shaped more and more shady as you go down. The upper stuff is good for collecting nutrients from the sun or more efficient at because it's less sensitive in direct sunlight. Well, the lower you go down, the more this material is more efficient at collecting nutrients in shaded conditions. Well, then the important question is, well, when are these shaded conditions? Cloud cover, absolutely. But even more importantly is at dusk and dawn. 
dusk and dawn happen six to seven hours every single day. So that means a tree that has all of this nice inner and lower green material is collecting nutrients for six to seven hours more every single day over the course of its 25 or 125 year life. And then if you realize how much nutrients from photosynthesis go into the root system, well then that makes it even more important because the more efficient root system you have, the more efficient the entire tree is gonna be and the longer it's gonna live and the stronger it's gonna be and the more it's gonna hold up to storms. Another reason, third reason, for keeping all of this nice inner green material has to do with the wind blowing through the tree. I've heard it said a lot, oh, I took out all the middle because I heard the wind needs to blow through the tree. Well, if you think it through just a little bit more, the wind is most influential on the tree when it has leverage. All of this, the longer the tree is, the more leverage the wind literally has over it. And the center material is much stronger. All of the center material also acts as a vibration dampener when the wind goes through the tree. Uh, let, me, let me put it this way. Here, here's the uh, main trunk. If we put a vibration sensor way up at the top of this uh, uh, trunk, and I knock with exactly five pounds of force, that vibration sensor would read uh, some sort of level. But then if I came in and I lion tailed it, I take out all of the inner crown, I take off this branch and this branch and this branch, and then I knock again in the same spot with exactly the same amount of force, there's gonna be significantly more vibration red on that sensor. So all of this lower material not only helps everything to get thicker and stronger, but when the wind does blow through the tree, it helps to absorb the vibration of the tree. I'm sorry, the vibration of the wind. I'm Angelo with Romeo Tree Service in Tucson, Arizona. Thanks for watching. You can see in this before and after that the left portion of the tree has been reduced or subordinated with reduction cuts to make it subordinate from the right main dominant trunk of the tree. Over time, that right side will dominate over the top of that left side. To learn more, please go to our website, RomeoTreeService.com, where you'll find our video, Mesquites and Palaverdes, A Homeowner's Guide.